Hello everyone and welcome to this talk entitled Python and C++ the best of both worlds. My name is Christian and I am currently working at the Qt company as an R&D manager. Uh, before that I was mainly doing development in PySight so I am really excited to let you know what we had in the past and what we will have for Qt for Python 6. First of all, I wanted to start by going through the previous version, the Qt 5 challenge. If you are aware, uh, you know that PySight started the development in the early two, uh, 2000s, and around 2008, we had the first version of PySight 1, the one, the first logo that you can see there, and this was mainly for Qt 4. Uh, but after a couple of years, and a lot of effort from people from the, com the Qt company and the community in general, we managed to have the first official release of Qt for Python, and that's the middle logo that you see there. This was in 5.12. And now we are currently in a position that we have gained all this maturity with the project that we are really proud to have Qt for Python as an official project in, in Qt 5 and also it will be in Qt 6. So one of the things that we didn't uh, need to manage in Qt 5 was to be ready to use Python modeling. Of course this was something completely new and uh, we're used to every uh, C++ projects and mechanisms only for C++ related and many other uh, couple of languages, but Python was something new. So even the packaging story and publishing was completely new for the whole team. So for this, of course, an option was not to ask every single user to build everything from source, so we needed to provide a special package, a Python wheel. Besides this, we were entering a new territory, completely new for us, because the Python ecosystem was evolving really fast and a different speed and a different pace as Qt and C++, so we need to adapt to this. So our main goal was to be, let's transform Qt in something, an official, an official Python offerings for the community. So after we reach all these levels with the first releases and all the modules that we managed to port, uh, we needed to start spreading the word. For this, we participated in many conferences, meetups, and many other events just to tell people, hey, look at what we have now. This is not anymore a just for fun project. And now we are an official project from the, uh, the Qt ecosystem. So for this, we approached also the, particularly the Python community because we knew that the Qt community will in general know about our offering, but this was something new for the Python ecosystem. But at the same time, we needed to also enable our C++ users to use PySight, to use Shiboken, which is also our binding generator that maybe you heard in, in previous webinars or talks. So at the moment, uh, where are we now? So the Python offering, offering is a real thing. We are an official project, as I mentioned before. We managed to have both an open source and a commercial offering out there. And also, we are a real option, it's not beta anymore. So it's, uh, remember at the beginning, many people say, yeah, but Python is not ready anymore. Now it is ready, since a couple of versions ago. So this is the current status for Qt for Python. I don't want to go into many details of uh, uh, examples that maybe you heard, or maybe you saw in our website, or repository, or previous webinars. But here you can see, of course, as always, if you go to resources.qt.io or our website, pisa.org, you can visit all these old materials. But now I would like to focus a little bit on the future, the Qt 6 future. First of all, naming is something really difficult. We had many issues in the past because uh, people were not really glad to have the new version of PySight as called PySight 2 because this led to people thinking that maybe it was a relation with Python 2. Uh, we understood that this was a problem and uh, we didn't want it to continue confusing the people. So but for this, since now Python 2 of course is also deprecated, we wanted to continue and keep the same versioning as Qt. So that's why you should expect for Qt for Python 6 to have the modules PySat 6 and Chiboken 6. This, was, this will allow users to follow and understand that is which version of Qt is the one that they should look at it when installing the module. I know maybe some of you will still not be happy. We wanted and we evaluated to go back to a, a name without a version number there, 
But it was a little bit tricky because what happened with all the users that we still have in Kit4 using Fireside? We cannot take over that name and completely remove that project. That's why we wanted to continue and you will have Fireside and Tivoken 6. So let's talk a couple of features that we will have in Fireside. The first one is that maybe you saw in early 5.15 releases that we have a new feature uh, import that you can add to your examples and your code. Maybe you didn't see it. But mainly at the moment, we are in a state that we have two major things here. The first one is the snake case. As you maybe might infer from the name, this is something that many users always were asking. And all the uh, people in the Python community that had some negative words about Qt, uh, one of the arguments were, yeah, but still you feel like it's not Python, because of course it's C++ API. You have all these camel case uh, methods and stuff, doesn't feel really Python. So with a lot of work, we managed to include this feature called snake case that will allow you to use most of Qt API where a camel case was present, with uh, following them with underscores, that we call snake case. Another thing that we uh, there is also ready, and you will have made in the next uh, bug fix release for 5.15, and of course in Qt 6, is a true property. As Python users out there, you will know that you have access to properties and you can modify them directly. So for this, we wanted to introduce the true property example. And in this case, you will be able to access, for example, any property of a Qt class and modify it directly. This means no setters and no getters. For this, maybe let's look at an example. So maybe you remember this tutorial that I am currently showing there. The expensive tutorial. If you execute it, you have this simple screen with a list on the left and you have an option to generate a plot just to see how much you're expanding. If you look inside the code, you should see nothing outside the common things that we usually use in the examples and tutorials. You have some main classes there based on your widget, you are using some widgets inside that were called some slots, even the structure of the main, everything is known for you. So there is no major difference there. This file is called main.py, but as you can see also there, there is this main snake case. It's the same look, same features, and also if we click, of course, we get the same plot. But what's the difference of these files? If we go and compare them, we can see that we have a certain lines that we have some different. So the main difference here is that we are using this feature, the from feature import snake case. Here you can see that now most of the API functions that we are using that had some camel case are now using underscores. So this will help and it will make feel all Python developers to feel more like home. And this is not now an argument to use that yeah, but the API looks really C++ with all these uh, camel case cases. So I really hope that you enjoy that example. This, of course, is only one little thing that you can do with this feature. And you can transform now all your codes into snake case if you want to use it. Something else that was really important for all of our developers is that um, the QML support that we had since the release in 5.12 was basic. We managed to expose the most important features, but still we knew that it was not complete. Now, we understood that the demand for QML is increasing a lot, and the same thing happens with all the Python users that we have. So we decided that for Qt6, we wanted to present a more stronger QML interaction with Python. So for here, uh, here you can visit uh, one of our latest blog posts that will give you all the details of the points that I will just say now, but in any case. So the first one is that we are removing the time constraint. We used to have one historical constraint of a certain amount of types, but now you can register unlimited type uh, QML types there. Something else that we didn't have was the special way of uh, registering types, particularly the singleton and the uncreatable type. Now they are available in Qt6, at least in the dead branch. And something else that was introduced in 5.15 that maybe you recall is the QML element. So since we are not working as C++ and we don't have a build system, we couldn't have all these processes uh, being handled by CMake or even QMake. So the thing that we are doing now with this is to mimicking and have a decorator type 
for your classes so you can register those types using the decorator QML element. Last but not least, we are still thinking that the tooling around the QML and Python integration can be improved, both for users that are used to the command line and people that is using IDEs like Qt Creator. Another story that is quite important, and since the release, I can still remember there were like three reports there, is deployment. So in this case, we had two options. The first one was, let's forget about everything there, and we do something by ourselves. Or the second option was, let's embrace and interact with the community. We wanted to do the second one. That's why, since a couple of versions ago, you can find in the documentation page, many tutorials for using many de deployment options for Python users. You have PyInstaller, CXFreeze, Py2Exe, Py2Lab, and so on and so forth. So we decided to say, okay, let's write down how to use this tool, and if we find anything that does not working, let's increase a little bit the priority there and try to fix the bugs. That's why I'm saying here that we are trying to be good citizens and not reinventing the wheel and trying to empower the other products. So we are trying to improve this interaction with other modules, and we are also trying to help those initiatives. Maybe they can get feedback from us as developers of this framework. But of course, not all the platforms are there with the current tools. So we are still trying to do some little research there if we can maybe help and improve other use cases for Python users in general. And since I mentioned the documentation on these tutorials, this is something that has been one of our, uh, the points that needs a lot of work. Documentation was an issue since the release, and we have been trying little by little, with a lot of help from the community, to have a proper documentation page that can showcase all the use cases and different examples so people can just copy some code and start doing whatever they want to do with their projects. So we are not forgetting about documentation, and we are keeping pushing for this, for Qt6 still, so you will see some changes also in the documentation that hopefully will help you, you as an advanced user, to maybe find out the cleanest way to do something else, or for all the new users to get started more easily. Uh, in the same way, we are always calling for contributors for this. Sometimes as developers, we don't see all the use cases that people is using out there. So if you know, you believe that something is missing there, let us know. So let's talk about, about uh, Chiboken in Qt6. So one of the use cases that we have is that many people is using Python for high performance tasks, and they say, but you know what? Independently of what we have, everything is nice in Python, but it's not performant enough for my use case. So something that we enable C++ user is that, okay, you can create your core application, whatever functionality you have that is really demanding, and you can expose this easily to Python. So you will have the power of C++ and the clean and simple code of Python. So for this, we are trying to make the creation of binding easier, and also we are trying to include more options in the type system, so you will have more ways to modify and adjust the binding generator to your example and your project. On the same topic of Shiboken, we are also dealing with uh, C++ support. As you know, there are many new things in Qt6 that require us to adapt the binding generator process and also how Shiboken handles C++ projects. So for this, again, thanks to the community and the, and the users that in general that are demanding for, hey, this would be really cool to have in Shiboken, we are including new options that will enable modern C++ support in Shiboken. So for this, if you still believe, again, that something is missing, just let us know, and we will do our best to try to figure it out. So, for the Python and C++ interaction, and I will not like to go now for the examples that you know. You already know sample binding and a scriptable application. So I want to sh uh, show you something different. Now we will look at an example, that it will see how we interact with custom widgets. So here, you, maybe you didn't notice, but we include a new example uh, that is working with custom widgets. There is this example that you can, of course, compile with CMake, use whatever you want to uh, make or Ninja. As you can see here, we have a couple of shared libraries. So this seems to be a C++ project, right? 
But now if we grab around, we have some Python files there. Okay, so let's let me take a look to the main file. So this is a really straightforward main file. And as you can see there, there is a main widget that is being used, which is called dialog. So in this case, we will not ju just go now and see inside what is this dialog about. Again, normal file here, but the difference is that, yeah, let's zoom a little bit there, and you have two widgets here called Wiggly widgets. One, it says that's come from C++, and the other one, it's come from Python. So, as you can see there, we are just instantiating the both classes, and we are including it in some simple layout. So let's look at this example and see how, how it exists. World Summer 2020. I know the example is not, it's not looking very modern, but the important thing here is not to look. It's not for you to remember all the 90s. It's just to show you that this example is showing apparently the same widget twice, but it's not. You just saw there, there is Python widget declared, but also we have the C++ widget there. So you are showing the same implementation of a custom widget, both from Python, which is completely translated, or from a C++ directly. You can see now the type, the type system is quite straightforward. It's just the name of the class that we want to expose because it's nothing extra that you need to take care for that specific custom widget. And then again, the header file, since it's such a simple uh, implementation, you have it there. With that example, now you saw that you can have your custom widgets in C++ or just translated into Python, which is something that different use cases uh, uh, from uh, uh, different use cases from Q. So let's focus now on what are the other new things that we will have in Q6. First, let's start for all the open source offering that we have. First of all, uh, we have been approaching all the other projects around that are somehow related to PySide. And for this, we try to, every time that someone says, okay, hello, my name is Blah, and I'm coming from this project, we are wanting to use PySite, but we encounter this error. We are trying to increase the priority on fixes all those issues, so we can have a better approach and interaction with the community in general. But the same thing, sometimes we see some users uh, trying to use other models in Python, and we see, hey, maybe we can do something to improve the experience. And the same thing is that uh, with this kind of collaboration, we are trying to approach the Python community in general to see if at some point also more people from the community can join us into helping and improving Python in general. There have been here some cases with different plotting libraries uh, and also some deployment tools. So we hope to continue and increase the interaction with open source projects. At the same time, we know that everything is not only interaction, of course, and you would like to have things to use. Maybe new examples, maybe new tutorials, or maybe some ready-to-use widgets. For this, we know already that we have some interaction with Matplotlib, and also from Pandas that we show in previous webinars and conferences, but we are trying to go a step further, because we know many other people is using different data visualization tools that maybe they can interact with PySite in general. Also, we understand the demand for machine learning things since the beginning of, uh, since the official release of Python. So we have been evaluating how we can help the machine learning community to uh, build really nice to have user interfaces to interact with all the modules, training and predictions. And last but not least, embedded devices. We know we don't have official support yet. Some Linux-based distributions for embedded systems have PySite as an official package, but we know that things could be improved there. There are really cool projects out there that you can use special Python wheels for Raspberry Pi, but also there are other embedded systems and other type of processors that we would like to support too. So here we are doing a lot of research to see how we can help you to get PySite in your embedded devices. So now, if we go to the other side, is that we have also a commercial offering, as I mentioned before. We managed to do this, and we are really happy that we managed to get some customers trying to using PySite. So in this case, we can try and follow all the success stories that we have in real business. So more people is convinced that q Python is a really mature piece of software that can be used in any project. So for this, 
Uh, maybe you already saw that we have some special offering for the Qt for Automation, which is now is called Qt end-to-end protocols. Uh, so we have special packages for those. So we are evaluating how we can provide add-ons packages for the special commercial offerings that we have uh, at Qt, and the same way that we can also evaluate maybe other fields that we can improve and um, trying to help more our commercial customers here. And this is something that I want to show you now, that is a sneak peek of something that have, we, have, we have been iterating, uh, which is a UI tool mainly for the Shibokan usage. So let's take a look. What you can see here is the first version of the tool that we have been working on. You can see there are some configurations on the left, some dialogues in the, on the right that we would like to fill with some information. The first thing that we need to do, of course, give a name of the project. Now, you see me that I'm trying to look for some special shared libraries of something that I already have built. So in this case, is our widely known sample binding example. After that, we go and select an output directory, so we can put and point there all the output for the build and installation that we have. The second section uh, is there are some specific options that we have in Python and Chiboken in general. And now you see that also you can select the, the, the modules in Qt that you would like to be your application compatible with. Since, of course, it is Shiboken, you need the headers. So, for example, binding, as you remember, we have both the track header and also we have the ice cream header. So, we are just including them there, adding them. If you need some external include paths, same story. Now, if we click there, scan for classes, you will see that we automatically detect things and you can uh, select and remove the selection of the other tools. Here is a long list of everything that we generate and we encounter with the, uh, with the, in the code model, but of course we will not include everything in the type system. If we click on generate, now you see that you have a reduced type system that includes only the two classes and objects that we had beforehand selected, and also some primitive types there. You also have the scenic file, with all this boilerplate code that you need to have to build it, and you have the option to edit both things. Here you see, I click on run, and everything is started to build. You can see some errors there, some warnings, uh, but also you can see now all the rejection classes that you always find inside a build directory to see if something didn't properly work there. So I really hope that you enjoyed this example. Okay. Enough of spoilers. I don't want to tell you everything else that we are doing. So, but just I, I promise you, we will keep you posted. Another crucial part of the project has been the community. Since the beginning, all the conversation and discussion and interaction with the users were through IRC, because of course, all the other two channels were on IRC. But little by little, we started to notice that both the Python community as our users too, were using different platforms. So we decided to start to be present there because in that sense, we are enabling more people to join the discussion. Yeah, it's more work for the people that is in several platforms, but still, it's a good input for the project. So that's why now we have many bridges, for example, IRC is connected with Matrix and Gitter, and also we have a dedicated Telegram channel that has more than 100 people there, and also we have couple of Discord servers that people have been setting up, and it's a really cool thing. So, since the, oh, the community is really cool, we wanted to approach uh, one of our uh, most important partners in the whole history of Qt, which is KDE. We participated with a small little discussion session in Academy this year, and we noticed that there are a lot of people interested in using Python in general. So we want to approach the community and see if we can do greater things together. So hopefully for that, next year we will have maybe better news for both Academy and also the World Summit. Something else that is really important is that uh, we know that with current tools, some people is a little bit lost when trying to contribute a patch to Qt. So we want to help the users to maybe with step-by-step -step tutorials or maybe videos on how you can submit the example that you have been thinking of submitting. Or maybe you found a typo, or maybe you want to change something a little bit or maybe you found a mistake in the documentation. So we wanted to help you, to help us, and for this, we need to have all these tutorials and things that are follow, uh, easy to follow. On the same page, 
We are trying to be really active regarding the official Qt.io Sludge blog. We post everything that we have there. For each release, you will get some updates from our side, not just a simple two phrases uh, a po blog post there, but maybe telling you a little bit of the things that we are doing. Because we believe that that's a really good communication channel if you're going to get the latest from Qt. Again, we have been having personalized calls with open source users and also with commercial users. So we are here just for hear your demands and see how do you believe that we, we should take this project for the future versions. So for this, I really encourage you to keep in touch in all the platforms that I already told you so we can communicate better and understand what are your needs for your projects and your little, pro and little examples. So what are the next steps now? We are still catching up with Qt6. Uh, there, if you have been following Qt development, there is a lot of changes in, on the dev branch. So we are trying to catch with this and trying to improve all the modules that we already have ported to Qt6 and all the build system and stuff. So this is taking most of our time. But still, as I told you before, since we are a community-driven project, we would like you to let us know what else you would like to, to have in Qt6. Maybe we will not have time to have it for Qt6, but we have other minor versions and it's not the end of the project. So please, let's continue these uh, conversations so we can understand your needs and see if how well uh, we can help you uh, to use um, PySight and maybe other features that you have in mind. For this, remember, join us on PySight.org. There is a special section there called Community. All the platform links are there, so you have no excuse to not join one of them. Thank you very much for your time, and I really hope that you are enjoying the Kita World Summit 2020, and hopefully next week we will see each other in person. Thanks.
Tony Tony. Then just run in. Ending part, take three. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. I really hope that you continue enjoying the Cute World Summer 2020 and hopefully we will see each other next year for the 2021 version. Thanks!